Welcome everybody who's logging in. We're just a couple of minutes away from getting started with today's webinar with Dr. Bader. Um, in the meantime, you can post a note in the chat. Let us know where you are logging in from. We have people from around the world who have registered for this program. So uh, please let us know in the chat where you're logging in from. And I now have made the chat available so you can, uh, you can post. So we have Susan in Fresno, California. We have Jerry in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Relly in Naples, Florida. John in Colorado Springs, Cincinnati, Ohio. Norm in Jerusalem. We have, it looks like Agra in Jerusalem, welcome. Sean Weil, welcome. Uh, we have Baltimore, Albuquerque. Someone by the Red Sea, welcome. We have Jerusalem. Thank you everybody in Israel for joining us. We're, we're praying every day. Um, we have someone in Alaska, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, New Orleans, uh, Rochelle Nason in Berkeley, California. Uh, welcome everybody who's logging in. We're going to get started in uh, about a minute and we have people registered from around the world. So please let us know in the chat where you are logging in from. Uh, Jane Barenbaum, who is right here in Manhattan. We have Shelly in Washington, D.C. Uh, Marjorie and Sarasota, Sarah Lehman in Jerusalem, Lainey Bergman in Seattle, um, Beth Galito in DC, we have Hinda Solomon in Rishon Lutzion in Israel, we have someone from South Africa by the name of Latitude 5520, welcome, and uh, we are, we have Mark from Melbourne, we have Jay Sage, Jay and Daphne Sage together in Newton, Massachusetts. So glad that you're with us. And we will end with Saul Israel from London. And thank you. And uh, Ilona, we'll start, we'll stop with Ilona Avi Nezer from Jerusalem. And uh, we welcome all of you. Um, we're going to get started with today's talk with Dr. Alexander Bader. We are really super honored that he's with us today. And this is launching our, in our series of talks with Dr. Bader which will extend through June of this year. We're gonna take place once a month. I'm sure you've all seen the announcement and if not, we'll keep uh, posting it. And I hope that you will join us for all of the very interesting topics that we have planned. Um, because we only have an hour today, we're unfortunately not gonna be able to take questions, um, but the session will be recorded. We'll post that on the YouTube channel. And just by, uh, you know, Brief introduction, Dr. Bader really needs no, no introduction in the world of Jewish genealogy. Um, he is very well known for all of the books that he's published for his surname dictionaries. And he is uh, an incredible expert that people turn to, he's somebody that I've turned to whenever I have questions. And it's really truly an honor to be joined with him. So um, you can use the chat while we're talking to connect with each other. Um, and without further ado, I am going to pass it over to Dr. Bader. Dr. Bader, I'm going to uh, mute myself and turn off my video, but I will be here if you have any questions. So you just let me know. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hello. Um, I will share my screen and I will start. Um, Okay, so uh, this first lecture, it's titled the Jews of the Land of Israel Before Mass Aliyah, uh, Names in History. Uh, so uh, this topic, uh, actually what I will present globally, it correspond to one chapter of my uh, current project, which is a dictionary of Jewish surnames from the Ottoman Empire and neighboring territories. Uh, so this is the uh, these are the area which are covered by this book, which is uh, globally all chapters are written already, and I'm working I'm on the finalizing the dictionary portion. And uh, moreover, not only it's a text which is written already, it was already also published. Uh, so if you uh, it's online available, and so if you uh, search for surnames of Jewish people in the land of Israel uh, from the 16th century uh, with my name, you will find the, the text, it's really available online. Uh, and so I will present it today, uh, the, the same inf information. So uh, there are three parts. So first of all, we'll speak about uh, before the 19th century, 
uh, then uh, the maybe the main part is correspond to the best source that we have uh, for the 19th century uh, that corresponds to Montefiore censuses and a few words just uh, between the uh, uh, for the turn of the 20th century not about Ashkenazim because as I said that I'm speaking and I'm covering only the uh, period before mass LEA. so this period from uh, from uh, 1890 to 1930 here I will speak about all Jews with that were not Ashkenazim because for Ashkenazim of course uh, first alias started before so the first topic uh, before 19th century, just a few words just to uh, to, to uh, uh, illustrate uh, what uh, was uh, the chronology of this land and uh, what was the Jewish uh, presence after the biblical times. So uh, uh, the main events that of course you uh, about which you know, of course, uh, 135 end of the Bar Kokhba revolt and uh, starting with that period uh, this ter territory is called uh, it's a Roman province called Syria Palestina uh, then uh, from the 17th century uh, until 1570s it was a long period during which uh, the land of Israel uh, was governed by different uh, government like uh, it was part of uh, various Arab caliphates. Then uh, there was a period when a large parts were uh, taken by crusaders, when Sel Seljuk Turks, and uh, that during the last century it was Mamluk Sultanate. And in 1517, it became a part of the Ottoman Empire, and it remained a part of the Ottoman Empire until the end of Ottoman Empire. There was a small, a short period of nine years, uh, then even if formally speaking it was Ottoman Empire, uh, it was uh, governed by Egyptian military, uh, so Mohammed Ali Pasha, uh, and it was a period that was important for Jewish settlement because uh, uh, it was a very uh, the the government will was very welcome uh, to to Jews. Uh, after, at the end of the Ottoman Empire, during the last years of Ottoman Empire, you see here the map. Uh, one part of modern uh, Israel was part of Syria Vilayet, but the largest part was uh, part of the same uh, district of Vilayet as uh, all of Lebanon. And there was also a separate Jerusalem uh, province, uh, G Jerusalem uh, Vilayet, that was uh, separate. But this was the, uh, uh, and uh, during this period, uh, 19th century and start of 20th century, uh, various various part of land of Israel belonged to different provinces of Ottoman Empire. This is uh, for this reason. Don't be. Uh, it's not a surprise that we will find an indication about Syrian Jews who actually lived in the territory of Syria, Ottoman Syria that was covered all, covering also at some, uh, during large period, uh, for example, Tiberias and Safed. Uh, and of course, from 20 to 48, uh, British mandate Palestine. Uh, what are the data about the demography? So for, Antiquity, we know about several millions of Jews who lived in the land uh, of Israel. And then there were several um, uh, major events that uh, after that, the population, the Jewish population of this area shrinked. Uh, the uh, most important were great Jewish revolt, after which the population was significantly di di diminished. Uh, the, uh, Another defeat of Jews against Romans Bar Kokhba revolts, uh, three years that were also disastrous for the Jewish presence uh, in this territory. And then uh, during the Crus Crusaders, again, uh, these events were, um, uh, had a very bad effect on the Jewish presence uh, in these territories. So at the end, uh, the first, first. Uh, crusade end of the 11th century. Uh, uh, about 100 years after the Crus uh, Crusaders, 
after the first crusade where was a, uh, a trip by uh, famous uh, Jewish uh, Spanish uh, travelers Benjamin of Tudela who know here you see uh, it's uh, itinerary and what he noted he noted the presence of a number of Jews and so sometimes it's not even clear whether he's speaking about persons or families uh, but here you see uh, the numbers that appears in his journey uh, uh, it's uh, the biggest community was in the city of Ramla now uh, it's still present near Lod, uh, 240 in Ashkelon, and uh, then about 200 uh, Jews in uh, Jerusalem, Caesarea, Accra, and 15 Tiberias. This was a very small uh, uh, communities uh, present. Uh, another uh, data comes from uh, the end, of, from from several rabbis who uh, went to uh the land of israel at the turn of the uh uh, 50, uh 16th century so at the end of 15th century uh where was the first travels rabbi uh meshulam meshulam uh, of volterra uh from italy uh he noted uh, about 250 families in jerusalem uh, mainly uh from iraq aleppo gaza uh Dam Damascus and Cairo and some uh, 50 families in Gaza uh, and a few years later a, another Italian rabbi Obadia of Bertinora noted some uh, figures which are quite different uh, so uh, for Jerusalem it was much smaller and actually he remained there so I think he knew uh, the number of families much better than uh, Meshulam of uh, Volterra. So he noted, Rabbi Obadia of Bertinoro uh, noted 67 families out of about 4,000 of families, 67 Jewish families in uh, uh, Jerusalem, 22 in Hebron. He also noted a few, uh, several families present in Gaza. Uh, and then uh, uh, 40 years later, a rabbi uh, Moses Basola, again an Italian uh, rabbi, rabbi uh, noted a large uh, figures which are much larger already, uh, 30, 300 families uh, in Jerusalem, uh, 300 families in uh, Safed, and a small community and others. So what occurred between this uh, during this uh, lapse of time of 40 years, uh, two major events. One of them is uh, the area became Ottoman and uh, Ottoman Empire was, uh, uh, was not uh, making any obstacle for Jews at that period to, to settle uh, here. And, uh, but especially, of course, the uh, exile of Sephardic Jews uh, that uh, took place uh, specifically during this period. And some of them uh, settled in the land of Israel, pri primarily in Jerusalem and especially Safed. Uh, then uh, another source about the demography, it's uh, the uh, tax pay, uh, paying list from uh, that were done by uh, Turkish so Ottoman um, uh, authorities, and so if we look at them uh, for the second half of the 16th century, uh, we find such figures as uh, small communities in uh, a few places, uh, about uh, uh, more than 200 uh, households in Jerusalem and about than, uh, more than 900 in Safed. So Safed became at that period uh, the largest Jewish community of the land of Israel. And for Safed, uh, Utsfat today uh, in Hebrew, in modern Hebrew, we have also a distribution of by congregation. So you see that the largest number of uh, households were belonged to the congregation uh, founded by people who came 
uh, not themselves, but their ancestors came uh, from Castile, Cordova, Seville, so uh, Iberian, Spanish, uh, Sephardic Jews, uh, also uh, Aragon, Catalonia, again, uh, Sephardic Jews, Portugal, Sephardic Jews. So you see here, uh, the Sephardic Jews were really a majority in Safed, in Safed at that period. Uh, there was a significant number of households uh, from Italy, mainly from southern Italy, Apulia, Calabria. Uh, there was a, about 60 households which were Ashkenazic, so divided in two uh, congregations, one Ashkenaz, uh, so we cannot uh, know whether it was just, mean, uh, here it means Germany, or it means Germany plus Czech lands plus uh, Eastern U Europe, maybe it's always, uh, it's uh, everything, uh, all, all of them, but Hungary was separate. It's still Ashkenazic, but it was separate uh, congregation. Uh, almost the same number from uh, North Africa, Maghreb, and there were about 70 uh, families uh, belonging to the Mustariba uh, uh, community, con uh, Jewish community, that is the local community of Jews who, uh, in, in Arab, that means Arabized Jews, so Jews who were speaking uh, Ara uh, Arabic uh, language, uh, and so these were the local Jews, uh, in, in uh, co contrary to all others which were uh, recent uh, migrants. Uh, Sephardic exiles, so what we know about them, here is a map that uh, I found on the internet, and if actually if you uh, if you look different Wikipedia, different other sites, this is the map which is coming uh, most often about the uh, routes used by uh, Sephardic Jews uh, who came, uh, who were exiles at the end of the 15th century. So you see here that one part was uh, directed to uh, uh, Constantinople, uh, so Istanbul, another was coming to Salonika, uh, some other were coming to southern Greece, and one group, according to the author of this map, was coming directly to the uh, land of Israel. Uh, from all information I read in uh, works of uh, major historians who wrote about this period, this link did not exist, actually. And the actual link was not from uh, Spain, from the territory of modern Spain or modern Portugal to the land of Israel. It was from this area to one small group to Egypt, a very big group to uh, Salonika, uh, to Adrianople. And then from these places, it was a secondary migration. And so people were migrating already from these areas to the land of Israel. Uh, and all famous rabbis, also uh, they themselves or their families, they usually came not directly, except for a very few, ex uh, but for a very few exceptions. But the global, globally speaking, uh, Jews who settled during the uh, 15th, 16th century in the land of Israel, we did not come from Spain, we did not come from Portugal, they came from Salonika, from Constantinople, from uh, Adrianople, from Cairo, but not directly from Spain. Uh, and uh, we, uh, when we see the name of rabbis, and actually for this period we know only the names of rabbis who were uh, uh, living there and were uh, uh, writing, and so we were signing documents, uh, we find that numerous names really uh, uh, show the presence of uh, uh, Sephardic Jews uh, who came either themselves, who originated either themselves, or much more often their parents, their grandparents, they came from uh, Spain. So names like Abu Lafi, al Kabes, uh, al Mosnino, al Sheikh Atia, Ben Ezra, Ben Habib, Ben Veniste, Caro, uh, Falcon, Najara, Suru, John, Davidas, all these names are typical for uh, Jews who were expelled from Spain or from Portugal at the uh, end of the 15th century. 
we also find a presence of so-called uh, Portuguese Jews. Uh, so what I'm calling, not only me, but numerous historians also call uh, these Jews Portuguese. They are still Sephardic, but the difference between the uh, old Iberian exiles and Portuguese Jews is that Portuguese Jews between the, uh, uh, when we, there was at least one or even more generation that, the, that who lived as Catholics, uh, formally, at least formally uh, Catholics. And so uh, after one or several generations, we uh, left uh, Iberian Peninsula and they joined a Jew Jewish community or they created a community of their own, becoming, bec uh, becoming open Jews. And so just to distinguish them from Jews who uh, themselves or even their ancestors never became Catholic for uh, some generation. So these Jews were usually they are called Portuguese Jews. Uh, often we can uh, distinguish them by specific names, uh, which are typical for uh, Christians uh, from Spain or from Portugal. Uh, but uh, when I looked in the list of rabbis who lived in uh, 16th century or 17th century uh, in the land of Israel. Oliveira is the only name from this category, which is typical for only Portuguese Jews. It was never used by uh, Jews who never became uh, Catholic. Uh, but some other we know for, for the family Gedalia, some of uh, uh, they became for a short time Catholic and then they returned uh, to, to Judaism. And uh, there are chances, I cannot prove it for 100, I'm not 100% sure, but there are, uh, the odds are high that Cordovero, uh, Curiel, Deleria, De La Reina, Sages, Sahalon, they also went uh, through the Catholic generation uh, because I know about the existence of families with this name who in Western Europe, so in Amsterdam, in um, uh, Ancona in Ferrara in um, and later in Livorno, who, who were really Portugal Jews and who had these names. Often, this was a name that they restored. Uh, this was the name of their Jewish ancestors uh, had before the uh, first conversion. Uh, we also find in the list from the 16th century uh, is some names uh, that uh, show that they are uh, ancestors of these uh, people, or even themselves, uh, usually uh, ancestors came from southern France, names like De Lunel, and some of them I called Yarchi in Hebrew because uh, Lun uh, means uh, moon in, in uh, French, and uh, Yar Yarchi means someone from the uh, lun, lunar, so it's just a, a Hebrew a translation of De Lunel. Uh, of one part of this name of, of this French toponym. Uh, Carmi, uh, it's a Italian, an Italianized form of Cremio, which is a French name. Caspi, Baz, uh, Delates, is some, uh, some branches of Sarfati also came from southern uh, France. Uh, a lot of Jews from Italy, like uh, Cologne, Galli, Coluzzato, Michan, Tivoli, Trabut, Vital, but some of them actually, some of these names were not of Italian origin. Uh, uh, for example, Cologne and uh, Trabut, they came from France to Italy, but the name started to be used as hereditary already in Italy. But uh, Gallico also means someone from France who came to from France to Italy. Uh, we also find already in the 16th century some families uh, who are uh, who came from the from North Africa, uh, mainly from Morocco, but not only. It, uh, some came from Tunisia as well. So Azulai, Ben Susan, Ben Tibul, Cohen Co Solal. Haleva Ohana, with this typical Moroccan uh, Jewish name, where there was a rabbi with this name already in 16th century in the land of uh, Israel. And when I analyze the names of all uh, rabbis who, whose names are known to us from difficult, uh, different rabbinical uh, documents, I am not sure to be able to identify local Jews. 
and the only uh, candidates uh, I was able to find uh, the name like Ben Saya, uh, Cohen, uh, Shabi, uh, because I did not find these names in any other source that uh, would, would be known outside of the land of Israel. Uh, and uh, Shechem, typically, it's uh, clearly a name that was taken locally uh, because Shechem means someone from Nablus in Hebrew. And so, but we don't know the person who came from Nablus to uh, another uh, place in the land of Israel, what was his origin? Was he really a local Jew or maybe it, he was a Jew who migrated to land of Israel from some 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 other area and he, without any surname and he he uh, he became known after the nickname Shechemi and Iskandari it's uh, also a toponymic uh, name from uh, uh, most likely from Alexandria uh, so what is about 17th century so all information I presented before it was about Jews whose names are known for to us from the 16th from the documents of the 16th century. What about 17th century? 17th century, it is a major decline. So the number of Jews diminish dramatically in all areas, uh, and uh, there are even some uh, periods then uh, no Jews lived in Tiberias, no Jew. Uh, lived in Safed, uh, so really a community disappeared. And uh, the end at the end of the century, really the last year, uh, 7000, uh, where was a dramatic event, uh, dramatic for the local uh, issue, uh, so all the uh, settlement of Jews, uh, there was a first mass attempt of the first mass aliyah, uh, that was done uh, by uh, a group of Ashkenazic Jews from Eastern and Central Europe, led by uh, the preacher uh, Yuda Hasid. Uh, they came uh, to Jerusalem, about 150 Jews, and actually the number was so large, so big in comparison to uh, the number of Jews already present there, that it uh, provoked a, a very large economic and administrative crisis and uh, creditors for Jewish com community uh, were uh, uh, stopped uh, to, uh, so, so there was a, a dramatic events uh, because of the of coming of we, all these hundreds of Jews who were uh, extremely poor. And uh, the consequence, administrative consequence of these events was that in 1720, uh, a local administration, Muslim Ottoman administration, uh, uh, provoked a total dispersion of the entire Ashkenazic community of Jerusalem from that moment uh, uh, because they were not able to maintain the life of all these uh, poor people. Uh, and so Ashkenazic congre congregation really disappeared from Jerusalem in 1720. There are still some estimation uh, for this uh, 18th century. So uh, there was a, a gradual growth in comparison to uh, the 17th century, uh, but still the numbers were small enough. You see, uh, in uh, these other four holy cities, as they were called uh, during the 17th century, uh, four main uh, communities Jerusalem, Safed, Hebron, and Tiberias. Uh, and Jerusalem was the biggest one, about uh, a few uh, thousand of persons, uh, and all others were rather small, uh, suffered, uh, several dozens of family, Hebron, uh, also uh, less, uh, about 300 persons, but uh, the total uh, population was small enough. Uh, the big growth took place during the uh, 19th century. Uh, and for 19th century, contrary to all this previous uh, period, we have such extraordinary data as uh, information uh, noted uh, during the Montef uh, censuses which were initiated by Sir Moses Montefiore. Uh, and they took place between 1839 and 1875. Uh, and during which, uh, with, during this period, uh, names 
first name, last name. Uh, so there were total censuses of Jewish population in the area uh, that were paid and organized by C Sir uh, Moses Montefiore. Uh, this census is covered not only the what is today Israel, they also covered uh, Beirut and Sidon, who now Saida, two cities in Lebanon, and one of censuses also covered Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, Egypt. Uh, but still, main focus was uh, on places that correspond today uh, to uh, to the state of Israel. Uh, so uh, here uh, you see the number of persons which were recorded uh, for during these five censuses, and I, I, I'm very grateful to uh, um, Association Montefiore Endowment uh, uh, who shared with me. Excel files with all uh, all data from all names from all uh, centers and so like that. I was able to work with Excel in not uh, just looking on a web website. Uh, I found uh, about several hundreds of er erroneous interpretation, but globally speaking, the uh, transcription was done by a very uh, qualified people. So. Uh, uh, it was a really treasure for me when I was working on this topic to be able to uh, have access uh, not only to the original uh, document that are uh, copied uh, for which there are photo, uh, pictures, but also the index uh, created by mainly by Israeli uh, genealogical society, by people from an Israeli genealogical society. So uh, people who are recorded during the censuses, they lived mainly in Jerusalem, Safed, Tiberias, Hebron, so the four holy uh, communities, and uh, often there were hundreds of persons in Acre, uh, today, Akko. Uh, in Jaffa, they start to be large enough, uh, starting with 1866, and uh, the last uh, centers already a significant number of Jews appears in Haifa. So what can be said, uh, checking this information. So here uh, are some statistics I made uh, working with uh, this uh, data. So uh, in this table, I entered the numbers of Jews uh, who had no last names. So if you, uh, in different censuses, so for example, if you look the line corresponding to Ashkenazim, you will see that a large majority of Ashkenazim are recorded without last name. And this, took place, and we Ashkenazim were not living uh, in the uh, land of Israel for a generation, no. They, almost all of them came themselves, migrated from mainly from Eastern Europe, but some from Western Europe as well. So what does this mean? Of course, during this period, all of them had already official surnames because they received them in Russian Empire, in Austria, in um, in Prussia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But as for them, with all these names, were uh, they were forced to acquire them by governmental laws, so they were outside of the Jewish local Jewish name and tradition. And so Ashkenazim just ignored the names uh, they received from uh, Russian, Prussian, Austrian officials, and so we were recorded in the land of Israel with their traditional naming uh, patterns. So first name, Ben, someone, uh, the name, first name of their father, but without, usually without the last name. Uh, the same is true for Georgian Jews. You see where, where is the Georgian Jews, they appear only in the last sentence, uh, census, and uh, two thirds of them, or more than one half of them, uh, had no surnames, at least, uh, actually, we had no surnames in uh, Montefiore censuses. But of course, when we were living in Georgia, that was uh, a province of the Russian Empire at that period. Of course, all of them had surnames. But again, with surnames that uh, 
to my, uh, to, according to my uh, investigation, were mainly acquired during the 18th century. Uh, we were marginal for them, and so we did not use them after emigrating or after coming just to live uh, for some years in uh, the land of Israel. Uh, a totally different situation for Jews who came from Maghreb, from North Africa. We usually, almost all of them, had surnames. And if we look into Sephardic Jews, uh, a small minority had no surname. But this does not mean that they were really Sephardic in the uh, narrow sense of the sense. So, uh, because under uh, members of Sephardic congregations uh, often were uh, also, if, if someone was a member of the Sephardic congregation, it does not mean that his or her ancestors really lived in Spain, in Portugal. It just meant that we're not Ashkenazic, not Maghreb, not G Georgian. And even I found some Georgian Jews here, uh, 10 persons uh, who were not, for some reason, ascribed to Georgian congregation, they were ascribed to Sephardic congregation. So uh, in the in, inside of a Sephardic congregation, they were really descendants of Jews who were Sephardic. So their ancestors came migrated from Spain or from Portugal, uh, but they were also uh, local Jews who were also assigned to Sephardic congregation. There were numerous uh, Jews whose ancestors came from Italy, and formally speaking, they were also ascribed to a Sephardic congregation, not to Italian congregation, because at that period, all of them were already totally merged culturally and uh, culturally with Sephardic Jews. So uh, I think that a majority of these people uh, called Sephardim, in the, uh, at least according to their congregation, uh, uh, they were not Sephardic, actually, according to their ancestry, but uh, Sephardic according to their religious uh, 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 their, uh, right. Uh, but uh, their ancestors came either from Italy or they were local Jews, etc., but not uh, really uh, descendants of Spanish or Portuguese uh, migrants. Moreover, uh, among the last names uh, uh, listed, some look like surnames, but I don't think they were surnames. I, I, more, I think they were rather nicknames. For example, uh, here you see example from uh, of Eastern Yashkenazim, for example, someone called Chernobyler, and it is written that his native place is Chernobyl. And so for me, the odds, are, uh, it's all, I'm uh, almost 100% sure that Chernobyl was not his last name, it was not his surname. It was just Yiddish indication, nickname, but he uh, uh, he was called Chernobyl because he came from Chernobyl. It was not his official name uh, present in the Russian official documents. And same uh, other examples like Dokshitz from Dokshitz, Tomashover from a Polish uh, city of Tomashov, etc. And uh, we also have such cases from non Ashkenazim. For example, uh, Antebi last name they came from Anteb, which is now in Turkey, uh, Gaziantep. Urfali uh, from Urfa. Again, in this case, I don't think it was a hereditary name. It was just a nickname uh, assigned to these people already in the land of Israel, according to the place from which they, they came, like Baghdadi from Baghdad, or Al Basrawi from Basra in Iraq, or Kurdi from Kurdistan, Halabi, it's an Arabic name for someone, Al Halabi is, Al -Halab is an Arabic name uh, for someone from Aleppo. Uh, same for Dimashki from Damascus, etc. So these uh, people actually had no surnames, they just na had na nicknames uh, created already in the land of Israel according to the place from where they came. Uh, and for Ashkenazim, there is an enormous difference between Western Ashkenazim and Eastern. Uh, you see here, uh, for uh, Ashkenazim, it was not just one Ashkenazi congregation, there were smaller groups. And for example, German congregation in 49, all of them had surnames. 
or Dutch German congregation, Ashkenazic, uh, almost all of them also had surnames. Uh, so Jews coming, Ashkenazic Jews coming from Western Europe, usually they had last names. And Jews coming from Eastern Europe usually had no last names in the uh, Montefiore census uh, uh, data. Uh, and a, a curious case for, for Georgia, I told you already that uh, a majority had no surnames, but what is, a, uh, no last name, but what are the last names that appear among 83 persons with last name? 26 are Mizra, uh, has the na last name Mizrahi, that means just Oriental Jew. Uh, 12 have uh, Gurji, that means just Georgian. One uh, is called Ajami, which is Persian. Uh, so again, for me, all this, if we look at the names in Georgia, in Georgia itself, Jews ne were never called Gurji, Mizrahi, Ajami. These names are nicknames for these Jews uh, because sometimes Georgians were uh, considered, of course, they were considered Georgian, of course, they were considered Oriental, but uh, since a large, part, uh, a large part of Georgia uh, was a part of the Persian Empire, so many of them were also considered to be Persian. Uh, so uh, these are nicknames, these are not surnames. And a few surnames still existed. Levy, we don't even sure, we are not sure that whether it was a surname, maybe just indication of the Levite origin. But a few sur surnames were really existed. So Kriheli, Pichadze, Batia, Bine, Ligula, Mardachia, Papi, all these are real surnames. But in Georgia, in Georgia themselves, the, uh, all names from the last group. They actually ends in Shvili. So it's Batia Shvili, Binia Shvili, Eligula Shvili, Mardachia Shvili, Papia Shvili. But in uh, sentences, they are uh, written without Shvili, which means uh, child in uh, Georgian. Uh, so, like that, it, they, uh, this name sounds more uh, less Georgian. Uh, what uh, uh, in this uh, um, in uh, with sentences, uh, we can identify the origin of ancestors often by uh, looking to the way surnames. Uh, of course, a very large group uh, has a surnames that show that their ancestors of these people were Iberian exiles, so either from uh, Castile or from Aragon or from Portugal, so modern Portugal is Spain. And uh, so the number of these people is very high, and they can be identified by such names like uh, Abra Vanella, Fumado, Akrisha, Lajem, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, they did not come, as I said, from Spain or from Portugal. They came to the land of Israel, and we can see it often in the censuses that they came from Salonica, from uh, the territory of modern Bulgaria, uh, from uh, the territory of modern Turkey, Greece, uh, Bulgaria. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we came to land on Israel indirectly. Uh, same is true for Portuguese Jews. Uh, so uh, here we find typical name, names typical for uh, Iberian uh, Cat Catholics, uh, or Portuguese or Spanish Catholics like uh, Paredes, Sarabia, uh, Fernandez, Ferra, Ferreira, Mendes, Miranda, Silvera, Soto. Uh, various groups, like for example, uh, with Italian origin, and I insist here that is ultimate Italian uh, origins. It's not uh, a very few of these people came directly from Italy to the land of Israel. Usually they came. Uh, to uh, land of Israel, exactly like Sephardic Jews from the territory of modern Turkey, uh, Greece, uh, Bulgaria, uh, etc. So many names uh, betray origin of ancestors in Italy, uh, mainly Southern, so uh, like uh, Sicily, uh, Calabria, Apulia, the three Southern provinces, so all uh, majority of names listed here, like Adato, Augustari, De Botton, uh, Cimino, Ma Matalon, Perachia, uh, Piperno, Ricon uh, no, not Riconati, uh, 
Talbi, Taranto, Varsana, they really came from southern Italy, and a very few came from central or northern Italy. Uh, Syrian Jews. Here, I don't say ultimate uh, origin from Syria. They really came from neighboring Syria. So they came from Aleppo or Damascus. Name, name like Abadi, Abudi, Ades, Arazi, Dwek, uh, Hamawi, Hemsi, Jamus, uh, uh, Seton, uh, uh, Shvek, State, etc. And of ultimate Roman Yod origin, so uh, uh, de uh, descending from Jews, uh, Greek speaking Jews who lived uh, in this uh, Eastern Mediterranean area before uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, Sephardic Jews came there. So names based on uh, uh, in Greek language like Axioti, Mauro, Gonato, Politi, and they came uh, again uh, from uh, the territory of mainly of modern Greece in Turkey, uh, or even Italy. Mauro Gonato there was a large uh, large family in Ven Venice, and they came from Crete to Venice, and some of them from Venice they came uh, came to the land of Israel. Very large group of Maghreb Jews. Uh, so uh, a large majority of them are from Western North Africa. So Morocco and the Oran area of modern uh, uh, Algeria. So names like Abekasi, Sam Salem, Azulai, Akrish, Biton, Karsenti, Korkos, El Nikavo, Toledano. Actually, uh, I, uh, it's on purpose that I separated them in two lines. The second line, starting with accretions at Indian and Toledana, these families came to land of Israel from usually Morocco, but they came to Morocco from Spain. So these are uh, Sephardic Jews, but who, uh, after the exile, they uh, settled first in uh, North Africa, so mainly in Morocco, which was uh, just, uh, which is still. Uh, just very close to Spain, to southern Spain, to, to Andalusia. And then uh, some of them in the 19th century came, some of his family came uh, to the land of Israel already from Morocco or from uh, Oran uh, uh, and its neighbor, uh, neighborhood. A very small number from Eastern Maghreb. Uh, Eastern Maghreb, I mean, uh, Libya, Tunisia, and Constantine uh, uh, Department of Algeria. So names like Alush, Bismuth, Hajjaj, Shemama, Tayeb. Uh, and the two cities that were the largest from uh, where Maghreb were uh, Jews, uh, Maghreb congregation were really uh, represented a majority were Safet and Tiberias. You see, see here uh, the number of Maghreb Jews was by far the largest in Safed and by far the largest in Tiberias uh, in comparison to all other Jews. Uh, and even in Jerusalem, uh, the number of uh, Maghreb Jews uh, was uh, similar to that of Ashkenazic Jews and only the number of Sephardic Jews was larger. Uh, so Maghreb Jews, their presence in the land of Israel in the 19th century was Huge, really, really, very, very important. Uh, what about sermons that could be created in the land of Israel? Actually, their number is very small. And again, I'm not sure about uh, just one of them. Uh, I've, uh, here I indicated a few appearing in the Montefiore census that maybe uh, they uh, uh, were uh, created locally and belonged to local Mostariba, so Arabized uh, Jews. Uh, in any case, I never uh, found these names outside of the land of Israel. Uh, but again, my uh, my sources are not exhaustive. They are comprehensive for many areas, but they are not exhaustive. So uh, names like Ben Dole, Eshadi, uh, Shahrur. Uh, why? Why there was so small number of surnames that were created in the land of Israel? Uh, first of all, Sephardic uh, so uh, a large majority of Jews who lived in the land of Israel during the 19th century were not local Jews. They were recent migrants from other areas. And uh, Sephardic and Maghrebi migrants, as I told you, they came already with surnames. So they, not, they migrated with uh, their last names uh, created in uh, other areas. So 
there was no reason for them to abandon in land of Israel their names. Ashkenazic, Georgian, and local way, uh, even if they came with official Russian or Georgian names, uh, they had no motivation to, uh, to keep them and actually, they had no motivation to take new surnames. Nothing in their culture was forcing them to start using uh, uh, hereditary fixed surnames uh, in the area where local Muslims had no uh, uh, fixed surnames. No law was forcing them to have uh, surnames. Uh, no, uh, nothing in their tradition was forcing to uh, have surnames. So, there was no reason to take new surnames for them. And a very important uh, reason, there was a major discontinuity of the old issue. So the family were not living uh, permanently. Uh, locally, there were many families that were coming and they were leaving land of Israel. New families were coming and leaving, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, a few illustrations about discontinuity. Safet was destroyed in 1660. It was a lo local war between uh, local Druze government and uh, Ottoman forces. So uh, during this war, the Safet was totally destroyed. Community was renewed a few years later. Tiberias, the same year, was destroyed, but the community was renewed only about 80 years later. During 80 years, we were either zero or very a few Jews who were living in Tiberias. Uh, I told already about the total dispersion of Ashkenazi congregation in 1720. So for some decades, there were no Ashkenazic Jews and Ashke uh, they were not authorized to, to live uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, a, a, another illustration about discontinuity. Uh, there are multiple surnames that appear in the sources of 17th and, and 16th century that do not appear in the date of Montefiore censuses. So uh, just uh, in some examples, Amigo, uh, Besudo, Castro, Coen, Tanuje, Gozi, Delates, and almost all Portuguese Jewish names, uh, Barbanel Sosa, Bendana, Aboa Posorio, Bueno, Mosquita, uh, et cetera, et cetera, these are typical names typical for Portuguese Jews, they were present in 16th or 17th century, they disappear. So uh, why they disappear? Either they uh, had no male descendants, but more usually just this family left land of Israel and they uh, settled either in Livorno or uh, they settled in uh, the territory of modern uh, Turkey, Greece, uh, but they left uh, land of Israel. Uh, and even for say, surnames that we find in previous centuries and uh, in the Montefiore censuses, uh, it's a still a, a discontinuity. If we take a famous rabbinical family, Shapiro, Shapira, Ashkenazic, we have one in 16th century, another in 17th, and we have in Montefiore censuses also several Shapiro, Shapira, but they were not descendants of those who came several centuries before because we see in the Montefiore censuses that they were born in Lithuania, in Poland. So these are not the same branches. They were not li living for generations here in the land of Israel. And many cases of Sephardic Jews, I just took the names that start with A. Uh, we find for all of them references in 16th century. But if we find references in uh, 19th century in Montefiore census, uh, we see that these people came recently from the territory of modern Greece, Turkey, Bulgaria, etc. So uh, names like Abu Abu, Abu Lafia, Al Fandari, Al, Al Granati, Al Kalai, etc. Same for Syrian, we have uh, multiple branches for Abadi who came at different times. Uh, Maghreb as well, Abu Abid Bul, uh, Ayash, Azulai, different groups came uh, with the same name. Uh, from uh, this area. And just to illustrate this uh, with uh, Azulai, uh, one rabbi came at the end of 16th century, another one born in Morocco uh, was present in the 17th century, 
Uh, third one, again, born in Morocco, so it's not the same br uh, branch, uh, came uh, to Jerusalem at the start, of, was present in Jerusalem start of 19th century. And in Montefiore synthesis, uh, we find uh, bearers of this name, Azulai, uh, at least two different uh, families from Mar born in Marrakesh, at least four different uh, from Meknes, Oran, and Tetuan, uh, so it's still uh, Western uh, Maghreb. Uh, again, different branches uh, with the same name were coming from uh, North Africa to uh, land of Israel. But we also have a few cases known for continuity. And the Azulai, uh, one uh, example can be, uh, it's uh, presented here. We, uh, one of the uh, rabbis that I mentioned on the previous slide uh, Abraham uh, Azulai, uh, who uh, was born in Fez, Morocco, and uh, died at Hebron. His son is was still living in Hebron. His grandson was living in Jerusalem. Then another generation in Jerusalem. Most famous bearers, uh, whose picture uh, I put here from, uh, of course, it's uh, just picture made rather recently. Uh, 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 was born in Jerusalem. Chaim Joseph David Azulai was born in Jerusalem. He died in Livorno, uh, but some of his descendants continued to live in uh, the land of Israel. For example, his grandson, Nisim Zerachia uh, Azulai, uh, was killed uh, during the F break uh, in Safed uh, in 1837. So here we have seven generations in land of Israel, and similar example of Abu Lafia in uh, Tiberia. So we uh, find a, Syria, a set of rabbis, uh, different generation, uh, lived mainly in Tiberias, uh, starting with the 16th century until the start of the 20th century. So a few words about uh, the last uh, period. Uh, for, uh, after the start of the mass aliyah of Ashkenazic Jews, so what uh, were the changes for non-Ashkenazic Jews? So for uh, Jerusalem, we have a census data of 1890. Uh, and I uh, excluded Ashkenazic Jews because of course they were majority. Actually, uh, Ashkenazic Jews were majority in land of Israel, uh, according to uh, Montefiore census, already starting with 1866 we were more Ashkenazim than uh, all others. Uh, but of course, with the first Aliyah, Ashkenazim became dominant. And uh, in non-Ashkenazic, among uh, 190 non-Ashkenazic Jews whose native place is known, the large majority came from Yemen. So well, this was another flow, uh, not uh, same size as Ashkenazic, but the second after Ashkenazic, uh, at, at the end of the uh, 19th century. Uh, and uh, many names here, uh, as you see, Arusi, Baidani, Busani, Dahari, Dahbani, etc. They uh, appear in among 122 uh, households from uh, Yemen. And to comparison, from all other area, you see, uh, it was uh, in for Bulgaria, it was 10 times uh, smaller than from Yemen, uh, very small from Syria, from modern Greece, uh, just 13 uh, families and from uh, Monastir now, Bitola in North uh, Macedonia, 10. So uh, really Yemen, Yemenite Jews were dominant after the Ashkenazic one. Uh, and uh, we were also during this Swiss period, we find some example of non-Ashkenazic Jews coming from the Russian empire. I told already about Georgian Jews, but at the last during the last decade of the 19th century, we find already in tombstones the description of um, uh, Jerusalem, uh, or in the census data of Jerusalem, we find name like uh, we've already with the Georgian uh, suffix Shvili, Adja Shvili, Jinjiha Shvili, Nanika Shvili, Shapto Shvili, etc. Uh, very few mountain Jews, but we know about one uh, leader, uh, Sherbet bin Nisim Anisimov, who came from Dagestan. And uh, families of Bukharan Jews uh, appear 
start to appear from the end of the 19th century, like Aminov, Isaharov, Musayev, Pinchasov. Uh, we, uh, we can tell them from, uh, I was able to tell them from others according to their uh, names. Uh, and last slide, when uh, during the eight, uh, 30s uh, there was a, uh, not census, but a voter registration list were published uh, for different Sephardic congregations, it's actually Sephardic at the West period often meant just everyone except for Ashkenazic. Uh, here you see uh, some uh, figures. So uh, the largest community were Jer Jerusalem, Safet, and Haifa. And actually, uh, I compared names with the present in uh, uh, in uh, this new send, uh, news water list to so names present for the same cities in the Montefiore census, it appear that Haifa Jews were main, mainly the new ones. So a very small percentage of them was present already in Montefiore censuses. And in Safet, there was a big decline. Many fam families that were present in 19th century, they uh, left Safet. And so only 20, 12% of those present in Pontefiore census, they appear in the water list in the uh, 30s. Thank you for your attention. Hey, Dr. Bader, um, thank you very, very much. That was really fascinating. Um, there were some very interesting comments, which I will send to you. For everyone listening, that was a tremendous amount of information. I know some of you have asked about the recording. Uh, it will be made available on our uh, YouTube channel. I'll send out an email uh, to everyone who's registered when it is live. And we'll also put something on the discussion group just to put on your uh, calendars that the next uh, webinar will take place at the end of February. Again, we'll send out the registration link. And we hope that you will continue to participate both in Dr. Vader's lectures and in, also and in other Jewish Gen uh, talk webinars throughout the winter and spring. So Dr. Bader, thank you again. Thank you all for being with us and uh, with hopes and prayers for everybody in Israel. Have a great day. Bye.